Hello friends, welcome to a video where I talk about how I got into Hopkins. I will be sharing my stats, my extracurriculars, um, my essays as well. Well, not everything, but like the Hopkins one. Um, I'm not trying to brag, but I hope that this will help all you people out there that are applying to colleges around this time. Um, I know that college applications are due around January, so good luck everyone. Also, watch till the end because I have a little bit of a surprise for you guys. Okay. Alright, so first of all, I will be looking a lot over here because my laptop is situated there. First of all, let me give you a little bit of background on what kind of applicant I am. I think I'm considered an overseas domestic student or a foreign national. Um, this matters because there is a different pool for whether you're an international student or like a US student, American student, I guess. I am technically American, but I was like raised overseas, so um, that's why I thought I'd mention it. The high school I went to was an international school with an IB program, which is the International Baccalaureate program. It's kind of like AP, you have a bunch of subjects you choose from, but for me it was IB, if that makes sense. Um, international schools, I believe, tend to be more IB programs, but I might be completely wrong. I mean, there are other programs too, like IGCSC, AP, IB, those are the things I can think of right now. Um, now I will tell you the schools I got into, and that's because not because I try to brag, but because you guys can gauge what schools you might get into if you have similar stats or, you know, a similar application as me, which you will see later in the video. So, the schools I got into, the full list, UC San Diego, UC Santa Barbara, UC Berkeley, University of Southern California, Northeastern, Washington University of St. Louis, Vanderbilt, Rice, and Johns Hopkins, which is where I am attending right now. Um, I also got waitlisted at Swarthmore, Duke, and Stanford, and I am still shocked to this day how I made it here. Like, I don't know how, and it blows my mind sometimes that some admission officer out there was like, wow, you are smart enough to come to my school. Um, I don't know how that works, but here I am. So what I'm telling you is, don't lose hope. You might think you're stupid, but someone else might think you're not, so yay. <laughs> All right, let's move on to my stats. Everyone's waiting for this, I know. Um, so my SAT score was a 1530 out of 1600. I only took it once and I also took the writing section, but I did not report my writing section because it was really bad. Um, besides, I don't think it mattered anyway. I never took the ACT because it just wasn't an option, but I think you're welcome to take both or whichever one you're better at, you're welcome to report that one. Um, my GPA was a 6.53 out of 7 because I went to an IB school, so it was from a 1 to 7 scale. Um, I'm talking about my GPA as of like applying to university. So from 9th grade all the way to 12 and a half, 11 and a half, like the first half of 12th grade. Um, I don't know what the exact 4.0 equivalent is, but according to my high school counselor, I believe 6.5 and above is like a 3.8 and above or like basically if you wanted to apply to the um i guess the schools with the most competitive schools you technically are in the range to apply whether or not you get in is like up to you but you know it's possible for you to apply um some classes i took i guess the harder classes i took in high school included you will only understand this if you're part of the IB program, but I took HL Chem, Bio, and Psychology, so and Math, AI, so higher level of those subjects. And then for standard level, I took English and French, and I also took band all four years of high school because I really enjoyed it, and I played bass clarinet, and I thought it was really fun. Um, you, Yeah, you can do anything that you choose, but also I believe it looks better as well if you um, challenge yourself by taking harder classes, if that's what you're interested in. But if you're interested in like um, easier classes, you're welcome to do that too. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to take all the hard STEM courses just because you think that will look good for your application, but in my case, um, that just made the most sense for me and I enjoyed them better. Like I'm not really artistic per se, so that's why I took the classes that I did.
Okay, now moving on to extracurricular activities. Don't worry, um, this may seem a little overwhelming for some people. Like personally, when I was going through the college application process, I watched a bunch of videos like this one. I'd be like, how to get into so-and-so XYZ University. And these people would list out tons of activities and they've done so much in it, but like, I mean, maybe I'm wrong and I'm just, I don't know, but Maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't do all of this at once, so it's not that overwhelming. Although it might seem overwhelming when I'm saying it right now, so I just wanted to warn you guys first. Um, I, in no particular order, I was a link leader, which I put the description as something along the lines of like helping new students um, get accustomed to my high school because we are an inter we were an international school, so there were a lot of people from all over the world, and it's kind of weird to move across the world to go to school. And um, yeah, that was my job. I would get new people and say, hi, welcome, come, have fun. Yeah, it was fun though. I made a lot of friends. Um, I was also part of student council. I was just a representative in ninth grade. And then I was um, vice president in 10th grade. And in 11th grade, I actually ran for president, but I didn't get it. So that proves to me that like you can fail in life, not fail, but like, you know, not necessarily get the highest positions that you want and you were striving for, but you can still get into good universities. So um, I actually thought that me not winning the election in 11th grade worked out really well for me because I ended up putting all my time and energy into something else that I was extremely passionate about instead of like, you know, having to spend all this time organizing student council related activities. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I also did some volunteer work, including um, teaching English and physical education at a blind school. Um, it's, it was in kind of like a rural area, nonprofit blind school. It was very interesting. Um, had a lot of fun. I learned a lot and it humbled me a lot. So that was something I also put a small segment about. I was also part of MUN, as in Model United Nations. Um, I would say I wasn't that good, like there were some of my friends that I thought were incredible and they're so smart and when they speak I'm like wow. And I wasn't the best, but um, I wasn't too shabby I guess. Uh, I preferred doing things like training new people. I found that I was better at training new people rather than being a really really good delegate. Like I wouldn't necessarily win all the awards, I want some sometimes during our, um, uh, what do you call them? like committee conferences, oh conferences, but I wasn't like the best MUN kid, I just really enjoyed it because there were a lot of like smart kids, you know, my friends are really smart and they talk about cool things, so I was like, okay, I gotta stay in this club so I can talk to them, <laughs> yeah, and then I also played badminton, I guess varsity badminton question mark, I wasn't very good as well, I was kind of like a bench warmer, but I was also on the team, um, for the last few years. I played that all throughout high school and I probably spent like two to five times a week practicing badminton for two hours, three hours or so, yeah. And then my final activity that I wrote that I was very passionate about was um, this, I'm not gonna tell you the name because it would disclose where I'm from, but um, it was this, it's, it was this like health group where we funded and organized vaccination events for children that were in more like the rural areas, like the poor parts of the country I lived in. And it was my passion project and I absolutely was crazy about it as a ninth grader. Um, and I spent as much time as I could until like COVID hit and I couldn't do it anymore. But it was a thing that I really focused my application on because that's kind of what I spent the most of my time on. And I was like most passionate about that. And that's all I thought about for like my free time when I was crazy about it. But yeah, so um, now I will, um, I, I think I forgot to mention it just now, but I also included in my extracurriculars that I played piano for many, many years. Um, not very good, but like, you know, got to a certain level. And then I also went to Chinese school on the weekends, and I also did something for a short while called World Scholars Cup, if you guys are familiar with it. I'm sure some people are going to be familiar with that. Um, it was kind of like a fun scholarly debate competition-ish, and I won some awards, 
wasn't the best, but I did win some awards. And I included that just because, you know, you want to try to include as much as you did and you spent your time on in high school. But there's also like a ranking for which one you think is most important. And you rank it in that order. So definitely for me, my like health group that I started was the very top. And that was the main thing that I talked about. Um, and you'll see that in a second when I read my Common App essay to you. Now for the personal essay. Very personal, so please don't judge me, but I believe that's what you're supposed to do if you want to express what kind of person you are to colleges. So yeah, do that too, kids. Anyways, um, the question I chose for your Common App was, discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. Okay, I'm gonna start. When I was in sixth grade, the doctor said, I think you have a congenital heart disease. I asked my mom that night, ridden with guilt and fear, are we going to become poor if I get a surgery? So many children in my local hospital are on the wait list for cardiac surgery for years because they can't afford it. I couldn't imagine what they were going through. How is it fair that these children had tenfold of what, ha what I had to experience for a basic human right of medical care? Three years later, I started, insert group name, I will not tell you because it exposes where I'm from, um, as an attempt to remove someone from that wait list. However, since funding a surgery was impractical, we decided on tackling public health issue of hepatitis B. We coordinated with a team, a team of mobile doctors and nurses, raised funds for vaccines, found, a location, found locations with children to vaccinate, and helped out during events and spread awareness about basic health information. At the end of our first event, a friend told me that a girl took our box full of color pencils and ran away. I thought to myself disappointedly, these people are extremely poor, no wonder she stole it. Ten minutes later, a little girl approached me with the biggest smile on her face, handing me the box. She had picked up the pencils other kids had dropped. I was extremely touched, but also disturbed by the sudden realization of how easily I made the cynical and wrong assumption that people were a direct product of their circumstance. She made me realize something special that day. It doesn't matter what situation you are in, you can always do a small act of kindness and you never know how much of an impact it can make on someone else. She doesn't know, but she inspired me to become a more self-aware and compassionate person whose future inspiration, aspirations would revolve around this idea. Yet I found myself feeling a bit directionless. Was I really making a significant impact if I couldn't see tangible results? On our fourth project, however, a woman ran up to me, close to tears, offering me fruit with one hand and holding a five-year-old boy in another. I have hepatitis B. Can you please stop it for my son? How was I to tell her that if she had had it, her son likely had it too? There was no permanent treatment, only prevention. I was infuriated that someone out there did not prevent it for them. Now, mother and child have to suffer knowing from, have to suffer knowing from a slow, goodness, grammar mistake, I just found it have to suffer knowing, I think I meant to say, they would die from a slow and painful liberal failure. So I learned that day, I may not always see a recognizable result, but as long as I keep my conscience and do something, somewhere out there, meaningful impact will exist. I like to think that I care not my own, but also the stories, dreams, and aspirations of the 1,462 children I met in my journey. With every attempt to listen to these stories with genuine care, I oddly learn more about myself. I learned to be more aware, choosing not to be ignorant when their friends feeling down, where there's trash on the floor, or an unaddressed public health issue. I learned to care more, choosing not to be indifferent when I see euthanized stray dogs, or bullying, or a helpless mother. And finally, I learned to act more, choosing not to live life passively and to do something whenever I can. Some people think I am nosy, unnecessary, and obtrusive, but as long as I consciously uphold my moral integrity, I will keep smiling like that little girl and give boxes of opportunities, kindness, and hope so that no matter how small these boxes are, I can make the world around me a better place and in turn become a better person. Yes. Last paragraph was a little cheesy. Probably would rewrite that, my current version of me, but um, that was what I could do with the little time that I have because I started last minute. Yes, that was my coming up essay. Okay, now I will read my Johns Hopkins University like writing supplement. 
I don't have the rest of my university writing supplements because I lost that email account where I had all my Google Docs. This one I actually requested from the school and they let me look at it, which is why I have it now. Um, I think the question was something like, oh, Johns Hopkins is this awesome school. Tell me why you want to go to this school. Um, it was funny because I like wrote this in two hours, but I think I still made it pretty good because I usually write journals but if you're someone who doesn't write in their own time and you're not that like used to putting your thoughts on paper then you definitely should be working on your essays way ahead of time unlike me okay now for the essay moral speculation was puny compared to moral action Paul Kalanithi once said in when breath becomes air I used to think that the only way to do good was to only love and master science to become a doctor. But Kalanithi's passion for English showed me that learning science alone was not the way forward. The humanistic science oh, was not the only way forward. The humanistic side of ethics is just as important too. Although I agree with the quote above, I must always do both moral speculations and actions to work on my lifelong goal of becoming the most act actively compassionate person I can be. Rather than forcing myself down just one path, I view the pursuit of my academic interests as a platform to become better equipped to act upon these values and improve my ability to make more sound judgments upon what is right and good. Since there are so many options to aid me in these goals, and Johns Hopkins has no core curriculum, I am curious to learn all that can be offered, that's why I chose to be undecided as my primary academic interest. And that is true, I came in undecided. Um, my planned career choice is much like Kalanithi's, to become a doctor that spends every day performing these moral actions and majoring in medicine, science, and humanities will prepare me for this path. Um, that was a major that I was interested in and I'm actually majoring in that now, so yay, it worked out. Um, rather, than, rather than focusing purely on science, this major recognizes that at the end of every scientific, every scientific endeavor, there's a humanist, humanistic aspect. With courses such as Death and Dying in Art, Literature, and Philosophy, Introduction to Medical Humanities, I can prepare myself to become a better physician one day that recognizes my patients as sensitive human beings with backgrounds and thoughts. Um, I really admire Johns Hopkins' dedication to the Baltimore community. When I first thought of starting the group that I talked about a lot, to fund and facilitate hepatitis B vaccinations for underprivileged Myanmar children, it was partially inspired by a teacher who told us, take one look take one step and look around. There's always an issue to be solved. And even if I don't consider Baltimore to be my community, if I don't originally consider my Baltimore to be my community, I wish to continue exercising my desire to do good for this world by joining one of the many student-led initiatives in the Center of Social Concern. In Johns Hopkins, I wish to become a better version of myself and always strive to be kind, independent, thoughtful, and hopefully inspire and be inspired by other students, professors, and locals I will meet. That is my essay. And in a second, I will talk about thoughts on why I think I did well and what I could have improved on. Okay, so my thoughts on why my application cycle was fairly successful, or at least in my opinion, it was very successful because if I got into anywhere, like any of the, I don't know, schools that I wanted to get into, which I had a very long list of schools I wanted to get into, I was going to be perfectly happy and I got into more than one. So I had the privilege of even like choosing between schools, not just like being chosen. So that was awesome. Um, what I think I did well was that I was, I felt like I was very authentic. I was very genuine about what I believe in and these are thoughts that I truly have and like I regularly think about it and I like write about it and I try to live by those standards and I think it was good that I didn't try to hide any of that so I read about all of that um, I think I worked pretty hard in most of high school uh, my grades dropped in end of high school but for most of high school I worked pretty hard I also had pretty good relationships with my teachers and that was just because I thought some of my teachers were awesome. Like they were just brilliant people and you couldn't like not talk to them and be fascinated by them. So like why wouldn't I have a good relationship with them, you know? I know I sound like a teacher's pet, but that's just what it is. Um, also one thing that I didn't really do in high school was I didn't do things for the sake of 
college specifically like I understand that's always going to be part of your motivation and there's nothing wrong with that being part of your motivation but if your whole motivation for joining a club or being part of so-and-so extracurricular activity is just because you want to look impressive on a college application that probably won't do you any good because you just won't be as invested in it so there are many things that obviously I have I didn't mention that like I tried in college that I guess could have looked good on my application, but I didn't follow through with them because I thought it was just uninteresting or ineffective or like just not worth my time. It was just not something that I wanted to do. Um, there were a bunch of other like volunteering opportunities that I tried, like put my foot in, was like, no, this sucks. Like I'm just not interested in this. So I would do what I actually cared about. So I think that was something I did well throughout high school. Um, what I think I could have improved on, I actually think I could have improved on my grades. 6.53 is pretty high, but like, you know, some of these um, more competitive colleges hold you to a very high standard, if that makes sense. Like coming here, I was pretty good in high school, but I struggle a lot here to like do well, but I'm sure like everyone else feels the same. I was struggling to do well in this school because it's hard. They expect you to do well. They expect you to be on top of your game because, well, it's like competitive kind of for a reason, if that makes sense. So they want to see that you can have good grades, which means you will be fine when you go to college, if that makes sense. So yeah, I have kind of like a semi funny story. Um, you would think that my grades are pretty good, or at least if I were a high school student and I saw me, I would think my grades are pretty good. But during my senior year of high school, my grades dropped significantly. Like it went from sevens, which is like the highest score to like fives in some of my classes, which is kind of a big jump. It's never happened before. Like I've always had almost all sevens and sixes. So that was a big jump. And um, Rice University called my counselor and was like, sore. We like this kid, but what happened to her grades? We're not sure we want to admit her because of her grades and they're going down. And I was like, oh my goodness. But my counselor being the angel that he is, he just made up some, I don't know what exactly he said, but I think he said something along the lines of like COVID and whatnot and how it's hard for everyone. And that's why there is an explanation for my drop in grades. I was so glad he worded it nicely because I ended up getting into rice. Yay. Um, yeah, and another thing I could have done better is I should have done more research for the schools that I applied to. I honestly didn't do much research. Like, I will tell you very embarrassingly that, for example, I applied to Yale and I did not do much research about Yale. I just said in my <laughs> Why I Want to Get Into Yale video that I liked the yellow bricks in the Yale buildings that I saw. And I was like, that's why I want to come to Yale. And that is obviously not very good reason for why you want to go to Yale, right? Um, don't do what I did, actually do some research. I think I was really lucky because I didn't do that much research for Hopkins either. I wrote it under two hours, but it just happened to be that this school kind of aligns a lot with what I already value. So it just worked out really nicely for me. Um, however, don't count on that. If you're gonna to apply to a university, do some research see what classes you're interested in and whatnot, see what professors you might want to work with, see why you want to choose this university out of all the other universities, make it special, you know, make it unique for why you genuinely want to go there. That is going to help. I think people do care because they want to know that if they accept you, you're going to choose them. So you have to show that you really want to go there, if that makes sense. So do a lot of research. Um, what else could I have improved on? Also, one thing, during my senior year of high school, I was feeling really down and I just didn't, I wasn't motivated to do anything in life. So I still maintain like fives and sixes, but that's only because I had a really strong foundation earlier. I just kind of gave up. I was like, I'm not going to get in anywhere. Um, I just don't want to do things in life in general. I just gave up and was like, oh, well, if I end up nowhere, but don't give up have hope because um, even if you think you're not that great of an applicant, 
they're looking for diversity and they're looking for different types of applicants. They're not looking for the exact same replica every year. So you never know like what unique interests and values that you have to bring might be something that a school is looking for. Does that make sense? So that's why don't give up. Even if just try your best. I mean, you have this shot, so just give it your best shot, if that kind of makes sense. And you never know where you end up. And I mean, wherever you end up, you'll probably end up liking it. And you'll find people that you appreciate, that you um, that you find admirable. But like, you know, since this is your chance, you might as well go full on and try it. So those are my thoughts for my application, plus a little bit of tips and tricks. Um, now, moving on to advice. Okay, so now, a little bit of advice for people. And you don't have to follow my advice because I don't really know that much. I am not an admission officer. I am just someone who went through the application cycle and in my opinion, was fairly successful. And um, I'm just someone who has met a bunch of other people who also went through the same thing as you guys and we just talked about it a little bit. So maybe I have some insight, but obviously don't take my words as a rule, you know? Just try your best and whatever happens will happen. Anyway, um, first thing I wanna say is that there are a lot of factors that are out of your control um, when you apply to colleges. So it's true that it's also luck, you know? Um, for example, there were some schools, for example, I got into Hopkins, but there are some schools that I really expected myself to get into that I considered my targets or even my safeties that I didn't get into. So there's no guarantee, and there's so many other factors outside of your control. It's not like your grades and your stats and your extracurriculars and your essays are gonna determine everything. Out of many other things, out of many factors, such as like financial factors, um, diversity, maybe they were looking for more diverse population and you happen to be like the 10th electrical engineer the application they read that day and they're like, well, you're great, but we don't want the 11th electrical engineer. We rather have like a mechanical engineer. So they might choose someone else over you. So like things like that are just out of your control and you just can't change. So there are two reasons why I'm saying this. The first reason is because, well, uh, be prepared that uh, to know that it's all like out of your luck, if that makes sense. Like not all, I mean, there's only one part that you can change and don't feel too bad if like things don't go well because it's not because you suck, it's probably because they just it just doesn't suit you in some way, shape or form, whatever that factor you can't change might be. Second reason is because, I mentioned this is because since this is this meaning like your application is the only part that you can control as in your essays and whatnot really try hard spend a lot of time on them don't do what i did because i really didn't do research for most of the universities i applied to which is not good um go ahead and do a lot of research go on their website look at what their values are look at what kind of um projects that these universities are proud of and are currently go like doing look at what i don't know professors you might be interested in talking to and all these kind of details will help you you because they'll help you give a better idea of like what kind of university you want to end up at and also it'll give you a better idea how to write your essays that are like oh why this university you know that's always a good thing um so that's the two reasons those are the two reasons why i mentioned that um another piece of advice i have is like i mentioned earlier don't get discouraged. Um, it can be a little bit discouraging because it's really tiring, like the whole application cycle and writing a bunch of essays can kind of suck, but um, just try to enjoy it a little bit. Think of it like time to reflect on yourself. And like, if you give up, that will do you no good. <laughs> Don't do what I did, which is just like flop around senior year don't do that if you can try your best and you're feeling up to it then go for it because you never know there will be someone out there like even if it's not the university you thought you wanted to go to there will be someone out there that will choose you and will be like oh you're great come here you'll go there and you'll love your time there you know you'll find people you'll find friends teachers whoever that will end up giving you meaning to your college career so don't get discouraged. All will be well. Yes. It will all end up well. Yes. Okay. And this is just me re-emphasizing things, but 
really start early for your essays and your application. Don't do it last minute. For example, a common app might crash for like 12 days. You don't know that. I think it happened or like it has happened before. Um, I also say start early because a lot of my friends that I talk to here all started their college essays very early, like probably the summer before the their senior year, so like junior, senior year. I mean, they're all here, so they're doing well, they're doing great. Most people start very early because it really helps you like organize your thoughts and you can get different drafts and you can get people to like read things for you, you know? Yeah, try your best and you got this. All right, so now for the surprise. You see, I am a small YouTuber. Well, I'm not really a YouTuber yet, am I? No, I'm not. But um, this channel is very much a baby channel and I want it to grow, uh, but I also want to be helpful. So here's what I'm going to do. The surprise is the first 10 people that subscribe, like, and comment on this video and show me proof of that, as in like, you know, take a screenshot or something like, hey, Casey, I subscribed. Um, you guys can email me that evidence. I will put my email in the description and then I will read your common app essay or your um, Supplemental essays for the colleges you want to get to and I promise that I will get back to you before the deadline of whatever college you're applying to I would say um, I would probably do best reading Hopkins specific essays or um, essays of the schools I got into. I wouldn't say I'm an expert in all universities. I am not that. So it would probably be the best use of your um, your chance for me to write read an essay if you like let give me your Hopkins ones. And if there are friends that are willing to read it for you too, then I will ask other friends. And if that's if that's what you want, I'll ask from my friends here to perhaps give you some comments and suggestions and whatnot. So the first 10 people to do that, that's the surprise for you. Free essay reading, yes. And after the first 10 people, um, you guys are welcome to still like subscribe and screenshot me evidence and whatnot. And I will try my best, but I can't guarantee I will have enough time for more than 10 people with like really deep essay reading and like reviewing, if that makes sense. So yeah, and subscribe because yeah, because I'm desperate. Thank you. Bye. Good luck. You got this. <laughs>